Hello everyone, I'm Vivi and welcome. Before we begin, I'd like to give massive thanks to developer Dinosaur Bytes for granting me early access to this game. It's very much appreciated. And before we dive into all this, I'd just like to remind everyone that this game is indeed multi-platform. The footage and gameplay you see here was captured on a PS4 Pro. Clive and Wrench takes you on a journey through time. Clive the Rabbit and Wrench the Monkey travel distinct worlds through time via a literal fridge in an attempt to stop Dr. Dokus. This evil doctor manages to steal Nancy's, Clive's cousin, time travel blueprints and uses it to travel through time to retrieve ancient stones. Stones which would grant him power. This game, for those unaware, has been a passion project for 10 years. Yes, this game was in the works for a decade and by a very small team at that. It's truly quite inspiring to see how this project has turned out over the years. This game really feels like a throwback to the pure golden age of 3D platformers. Playing this game really felt like a trip down memory lane, just sitting on the couch as a young kid, going through different varied worlds, and just exploring, collecting. And that's what I absolutely adore about this game, the collectathon nature of it. You go through 11 varied worlds, each varying in size, platforming challenges, oh and costumes. Each world has its own unique costume. You jump, run, and glide around the whole space as Clive and Wrench. While exploring these levels, you're always on the lookout for the main collectible, the Ancient Stone. Each world has 10 of these stones hidden throughout. To unlock boss areas, you simply need to find enough of them. So in other words, collecting enough allows you to skip a level and jump straight into the boss section, if you ever feel like it. Speaking of stones, some are hidden, very well hidden at that. I was always keeping an eye out for hidden little corners or ledges, and I'm yet to find all of them. Others are rewarded to you after completing mini side quests like finding pandas in this industrial themed level or finding Christmas presents even. But do be careful here, unfortunately, if you leave the level without collecting the ancient stone that was rewarded to you via a mini side quest, you have to redo that side quest all over again. It sadly doesn't get saved unless you collect it. This is something I encountered in the first level, so again, make sure you collect all the stones. By the way, I love snowy themed levels, so it was an absolute joy exploring this level. The music even was really fun to listen to. The same could be said for any of the other levels' tracks. You can also find 5 keys in each level. Finding all of them unlocks a safe with an ancient stone in it. Now by either pressing on the touchpad or clicking on the pause menu, you can take a look at all the stones you've collected so far. If you're missing one, you can use each description as a hint to their location. There's a scroll you can find in each level as well. Giving the scroll to this llama in each world rewards you with a hint on areas to look out for. Very useful especially when trying to find all these keys. Another collectible would be the watches. Each world has a varied number of them, and if you ever have trouble locating all of them, you simply press up on the D-pad to activate this antenna. It'll point towards the nearest watch. This was especially helpful for the Egyptian themed level. Quite a large number of them you have to find here, and speaking of this level, didn't I say something about always being on the lookout? There's one section which really entices the player on paying close attention to their surroundings, like how to get across these falling platforms for example. In terms of platforming in this game, every moveset is already unlocked from the get-go. You jump straight into the game and play whichever way makes you the happiest. To get you up to speed, there's an orientation room. You go in there, practice until you feel ready to tackle the actual levels. One thing I absolutely appreciated is the fact that you don't even need to keep holding square to glide in the air. You simply press square once and you glide. Once you're satisfied, you press square again to let go. However, as much as it's fun to run around and jump around as you wish, the X button sometimes feels sensitive. What I mean is when you attempt to run and double jump, you instead roll and jump once, resulting in a fall. This was quite unfortunate for levels with a lot of moving platforms. Times like these, I felt like I had to be too careful. It felt like I had to press X just right. 
If not, well, I would miss my double jump and fall. Although the game doesn't require a lot of swimming, it did feel really rough at first and took a lot of getting used to, especially when always coming up to the surface. I'd come up and dive back in when I didn't want to. Naturally, if you're looking around the area, you rely on the camera control. Unfortunately, the game does not have the option to adjust camera speed. That's something which caught me off guard at first but it just so happens I got used to it in the end. Playing the game throughout, I did not experience any frame drops. Not quite sure if the game runs at a solid 60 FPS, but I did notice smoother frames when watching cutscenes. Clive and Ranch didn't have any game-breaking glitches, but it did suffer from a bit of audio and visual glitches. NPC dialogue would keep playing, I, at a point, got stuck talking to this NPC. I did manage to get unstuck by pressing square repeatedly. That's what you usually press to skip dialogue. Music would stop here and there until I decided to jump in the water. When hitting these enemies, some of them tend to bounce ragdoll to no end, and I don't know if that's supposed to happen, but what seemed more unusual is this right here. After hitting these guys, they would just do this. Upon re-entering World 3, one of the NPCs just straight up disappear, but this only happens after you collect your Ancient Stone. For those curious about load times on PS4, entering a level varies between 20 to 25 seconds, but takes longer when exiting a level, about 40-45 seconds. Entering boss areas is significantly less, pretty much instant. Another thing I noticed, depending on how you point the camera, I noticed that running to the right stutters our character movement. Same thing happened especially this boss fight right here. Running towards the right or counterclockwise would cause both our character and the boss to stutter. Cliven Ranch's bosses, or boss areas rather, I really found underwhelming. Not just that, the difficulty scale just felt unbalanced. The first boss proved to be quite fun. Challenging even. It took me a couple of tries to get the hang of it. Same goes for the last level boss, sadly. For the rest, I did not get that same feeling. In fact, only a couple of them were actual boss fights. A whole bunch of them just felt like extra padding. Collecting watches in this case, with a more challenging layer patched onto it. Not to mention this runner type boss area. You really have to be precise and strictly minimize impact on obstacles. The lava easily catches up to you. Thankfully, I didn't have to deal with long low times during boss segments, especially for this runner section. All in all, what really holds this game together is the mere platforming and collectathon nature of it. You get to explore all these different themed levels while also having that gameplay flexibility. So much flexibility, in fact, you can even enable a timer via the options menu. It'll show you just how fast you can finish a level. Trophies also add more playtime, I've noticed. I still haven't unlocked all of them, and while revisiting these worlds, you might be on the lookout for very cool easter eggs, literally and figuratively. If you enjoy exploring, platforming with your method of choice, and enjoy collecting things, then Clive and Wrench is a game I recommend. Thank you for watching. As always, thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel and for all of you who tuned in as well. Thank you. I've been Vivi, and until next time.